Proxmoor Sports Network coverage. The MLK Stop the Violence Showcase Day 3. I'm Ty Polk with Travis Newton as we're about to see the International Sports Academy take on our family. And for the International Sports Academy, they're out of Willoughby, Ohio, and they have three players that are going to be very interesting in Josh Irwin, Broden Leon, and Michael Lucarati. Yeah, these guys are definitely ballers. This is the lineup we mentioned earlier, one through five. They're going to play high-level Division I basketball. And uh, with Lucarati, he's a shooter. you got to keep a hand up on him. And also with Broden Leon, he's a big man, but they have him listed as a wing. It's We're moving into positionless basketball in today's era, and he is the definition of it. He can shoot it from way downtown. He can also muck around in the paint. So you got to watch out for Broden Leon no matter where he is. Absolutely, and they have recruits going into Youngstown State, Duquesne, Valparaiso, and South Dakota State. So again, another NCAA quality matchup here tonight. For our family, it's a, it's an interesting lineup with them. They're led by Trey English, their point guard out there, who does a lot of great things for that team. Yeah, I mean, their backcourt is really what carries them. Trey English, every play starts with him. The ball is always in his hands to start the play. And he's not going to go out and score 20 points a night, but he facilitates, he gets other people open, because they have some all-stars in the backcourt, including K.J. Evans and also Adam, Adam Walden two big time players and they can get it done in almost every way on the court. So what are your keys to the game for International Sports Academy? So for ISA, they're the smaller team, they're the least athletic team. They have to play fundamental basketball and that's what they do. They have a great coach. They play the game the right way. They just have to go out, box out, not make turnovers and hit as many shots as you can because we know this team uh, for our family is gonna put up a load of points. Absolutely, and what are the keys for our, our family? For our family, like I said, they're the more athletic team. They're the more experienced team. Get out there, run the court, just use your speed to your advantage, use your athleticism to your advantage, and they're going to do that tonight. Uh, they're one of my favorite teams that we've seen play in this showcase the past two years, and they know how to play basketball. A lot of returners, a lot of stars, including K.J. Evans, the 10th-ranked sophomore, according to ESPN. So they're, they're going to be able to get the job done. They just have to keep the turnovers down and play an athletic game. Absolutely, and uh, our our family is coming off a win over First Love Christian Academy. Who well, again, their game is a little postponed because Carolina Basketball Academy's bus trouble. Like, what did you see from that game? So from that game, it there was two very athletic teams. Obviously, we've seen uh, our family, we've seen First Love. It was a really good matchup, but our family was just a little bit too much for them. They had the lead throughout the entire game. The best lead was 12. They got it down to two late in the third quarter. But our family knows when to put the foot on the gas and close things out, and they did it last night. And International Sports Academy, they had the second largest loss at only four points to the West Virginia Elite. What did you see from that team? Yeah, they drew a tough card yesterday with that West Virginia Elite team. But ISA came out, and they played a really good game. Like you said, it was a short margin, and it was a close game throughout, one of our closer games. But like I said, they're well coached, so they can come out against these very experienced, very athletic teams and still put up a good fight and have a chance to win. So who's the player that you think for each team that will be, that you expect to be the best performer tonight? Yeah, so Broden Leon, uh, he's obviously the best player on ISA. Like I said, he can shoot it, he can mess around down in the paint, and he has great composure and great moves inside. And then it's gonna be Adam Walden, the seven footer here for our family. He's another one that can stretch it out and shoot it, but he makes his bread and butter down there in the painted area. He's going to be the biggest player on the floor at all times, so I look for him to really excel today. So, so an interesting question I want to ask you, like, being, being that you've done this for two years, like, what have you learned about basketball in America from watching this event? So, I mean, just from these games, it's that there's plenty of talent around the country. I mean, this is just teams representing the East Coast. Obviously, there's West Coast basketball and in the Midwest. But East Coast uh, has some great basketball. I mean, I've been covering basketball tournaments in this area, in Maryland, West Virginia, Pennsylvania for a long time. And this is the best of the best. So you're going to get a good show with these players. And I mean, it's international, it's local, it's everything you can need for basketball. And this is definitely just a great showcase. Absolutely. And we'll be, we'll be glad to show you some action finally tonight, as this will be game one, even though technically it's game two in our schedule tonight between the International Sports Academy and our family. And so another thing that I want to
I want to talk about is that you've got to see the Woodland Hills girls team last night. They've had they've had some trouble against 6A teams, but that's expected. They're a 5A team, and usually the, the advantage is the section because, you know, typically bigger roster. Yeah, so they took on North Allegheny last night. North Allegheny is a very good team with a number of players that are going to be playing just like these guys. High-level Division I basketball. Woodland Hills came out, and they were slow from the start yesterday. They had way too many turnovers, and I get it. They're a young team, but really the youth on that team is the backbone, including Hope Hopkins, or sorry, Hope Hawkins. She came out and had a 20-point performance last night as a freshman coming off the bench. So they just need to continue to feed her, and of course Peyton Pinckney, she's the backbone of that team. She's the one who's going to be able to get it done night in and night out. I'd really just like to see her get some more touches and have her facilitate the offense a little bit more. Absolutely. Hawkins in that first game for Gateway to start the reopening season for the WTIAL came off the bench in terms of Pinkney got into a little bit of foul trouble, but Hawkins came right through and almost there was no drop off from Woodland Hills there. And of course, right now with the boys team right now, 0-2, a little bit of hard luck right now, but you're sure that they will bounce back under Eric Jefferson and the, and the rest of the guys there. Yeah, it's certainly a tough year. Uh, Woodland Hills men's team, they've had their ups and downs, and it's still early in the season for them, obviously, due to COVID. They got a later start, but they'll be able to pick it up. They have athletes. They have players that can shoot. They just got to figure out how to put it together, especially with a very young team playing against some good competition. Absolutely. And one year ago, prior to the MLK Showcase last year, that's when the team really got off to a hot run, ending their ending their, their season, winning six of their last nine. And you're hoping that they can repeat that again against Penn Hills later this week. Yeah, they were definitely clicking there later in the season, but Penn Hills is going to be a tough opponent. I can tell you that right now. They're division rivals. They don't like each other. And Penn Hills had their number last year. What Woodland Hills is going to have to play a perfect game to be able to compete with Penn Hills. Absolutely. And, well, what else have you seen in your time as, like, a commentator around here, like, in terms of covering basketball? I know that, of course, Penn Hills is another great team. Gateway, Kiski area. A lot of these teams, they're, they're great. And it's a tough challenge for Woodland Hills in their section. I mean, just in general, sports in Pittsburgh are at a supreme. I mean, you have some of the best of the best, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, you're going to see the best. And uh, I've had a great opportunity to see a lot of the best athletes around the area. And uh, it looks like we're running low on time here, but we're about to see some of the best in the country right now. Absolutely. And stay tuned with us on the Roxburgh Sports Network. We'll have action late. Sports Network as we're under our way as our family gets the tip and it's Trey English with the ball. Now it's Evans. Hands it off to Lindsay. 
Bryce and Lindsay quickly. by Luke Walden Ronnie. working hard in the paint trying to get position on the younger player. Walden almost lost the ball. Stays with it. Back to Evans. Evans. Over the screen for two. That one is a work skying. And nice play. And that's exactly what Walden does. A nice looking shot there by KJ Evans. He hasn't been able to find his shot in these past two games, but Walden doing a great job of cleaning off the mess off the backboard. So Walden with the first points of the game. That went off. Rebound to Evans. And nice move by. And that's the versatility that the 10th ranked sophomore in the country has. He's long, he's fast, he can do it all on the court. That time getting to the basket for the easy deuce. On the inbound. Inside pass, Ratchik. Can handle it there. And it's stolen by Evans. Barry Evans, and it's a held ball. That was a nice looking pass there by Josh Irwin. Just a little bit too much heat on it for number 20 to get the fastball. That was Rackage. So on the inbounds, ISA, Irwin. To Lucarati. Lucarati guarded by English for three. Rachik, and that one goes. That's a nice looking shot. Of course, Trey English with the supreme defensive pressure up at the top of the key, but a nice pass and an even better looking shot. Inside pass, Walden with the jam. Great ball movement there by our family. Found KJ Evans wide open down on the block. Correction, Evans. Number 30. So back the other way, Evans spinning off the side of the basket. And now go the other way for ISA. For three. Lion. Roden Lion. And that's what he does. The big man able to stretch the court, and they are definitely not gun shy from beyond the arc to start this game. I think they know that they're going to have to hit a few of those to be in the game with our family. So 6 6 game, two and a half minutes played. Screen by Lindsey. Lindsey, he'll pop for three. That went a little short. And it's Lion. Lion, crossover move. Corner pass, couldn't handle it. And a push and, there. And ISA can't have turnovers like that. They have to cherish every possession they have against this very impressive Our Family team. So that first foul is on to Cisco. Game tied at six. 521 left in the first period. And it's Lindsay. Over to English. English for three. That one rattles home. And Trey English, definitely not known for his shooting abilities, but gets that one to rattle away. A nice bounce, and that's what they call shooter's touch. Absolutely. You need that a lot whenever you're going to the next level, and Trey English certainly is ball off of an R family player so it'll remain with ISA. And ISA scored yesterday a couple times off of their inbound plays and that's the result of good coaching. Let's see what they can draw up here. So it's Lyon over to Rochich. Inside pass. Back to Rochich for three. That one bounces away and the rebound goes to Barry Evans. And he'll bring it up for our family. Evans. Over to Evans. KJ Evans. And that was a great look there by ISA, feeding it down into the post, leaving Leon wide open at the top of the key. He'll usually convert on that. Walden faces up and gets the two. Quick moving game here, five point lead. And on that last possession for our family, we saw Walden hit the short little jumper. He can really do everything for this team out of everyone I see here on the court. I see him as having the most likely chance to go to the league. Just the frame he has and the offensive skill set, he's built for the moment. 
it's interesting to see a lot more man here in these games right here because as we've seen with Woodland Hills, you know, it's been typically zone. But with these guys, they try to do a lot of man as that one doesn't go for Bryce Lindsay, but he gets it back. Lindsay on the layup. And Coach Dave Brisky for ISA, not happy with the effort there on the offensive boards. Got to get a body on these athletes, man, or they'll kill you. Absolutely. So a timeout, ISA. Scores 13 to 6 in favor of our family. And Travis, it's just been, it's interesting to see these athletes just come out here and play. It's certainly a faster pace than we're used to seeing with along the Whitfield, but it's just, it's just how it is with a lot of these national contenders, guys. It's, it's not, it's not going to be a slow pace. It's going to be movement, movement, movement. And even with no shot clock, it feels like they kind of have an internal shot clock to get moving. Yeah, and that's the thing with playing a national basketball schedule. Week in and week out, you're playing quality teams, so you're only going to get better from that. And we can tell that these are two well-polished machines. Our family just has a little bit more firepower. Absolutely. So long pass on the inbound, and it's stolen by English. Nice play there. English, crossover. English, a little bit of moves. And he'll pull it back out. He wants an ISO. Trey English, kick for three, not this time. Rebound ISA. And that was a lazy possession there for our family. A lot of standing around and letting Trey English work. Like to see more movement from them because he's not going to be able to beat everyone off the dribble. Luke Karate on the follow up. Last touch by our family, so it'll remain an ISA ball. Inside, nice play by Lyon. And there we go again, scoring off the inbound play, catching, I, or sorry, our family sleeping on defense. What's the type of sets that teams typically like to run in inbounds to get these plays? So a lot of times on the inbounds, it's usually a screen the screener play. Um, if not, it's looking for a defender that has his back turned and trying to just sneak the ball right in past his head. That's what we saw in the last one. The defender's just not really in a defensive stance, and it was an easy pass resulting in an easy bucket. Rochick for three. That didn't work on the previous possession. It was Evans for two. Back the other way. Alley ooh, to Evans. Nice play. What a feed there by Trey English to Evans, finding them high up in the rafters and throwing it down. And you mentioned our family's athleticism as that's brought him out to a 10 point lead right there. And already a quick seven points for the star of the show and KJ Evans after he hit a three two possessions ago. He's got seven points. And man, just high flying basketball early here. As we have 234 left in the first period, our family up 10 on International Sports Academy. And Walden is going to take a quick break, head to the bench, so it'll be a shorter lineup in the game now for our family. But they've been shooting it well, and that definitely helps them out. On the cut, Evans gets that one to go. And that's just a big boy score down there. It was contested, but he's taller and stronger. And answering right back is Damari Martin for three. That breaks out a little mini funk for ISA. They're now up to 11. Two minutes gone, two minutes left, excuse me. Evans, Evans on the drive. Just tried to throw it up there, tried to get a foul, it didn't work. So now it's ISA on the break. Stopping up is Rachik for three off the front rim. Surprised to see so many threes from both of these teams. They definitely didn't shoot this many yesterday, but they're coming out ready to pull. So our family trying to slow it up. Rocha, it's got a hand on it, and he'll pick up the steal there in the front court. Lucarati on the layup, a little short. Fighting for it is our family and Lucarati, and no call, a held ball. And Lucarati had a teammate wide open in the corner, declined the pass. It was Anthony Gomez who would have had a great look, instead tried to attack the bigger defender, and we see where that got him. Under a minute and a half left. Here in this quick moving first period of play, it's our family up nine. The score's 20 to 11. Hey, quick moving's always good for me. That means a lot of points and not a lot of fouls. That's the kind of basketball we enjoy. 
Absolutely. So far, only one foul. Inside pass, a kick out. Woodyard. Parsons to KJ Evans. Now Lindsay. Lindsay for three. Bounces high, rebound ISA. And that's Lou Karate, and he'll bring it up. Inside pass. Nice play there. And it'll count. Great play there by Josh Irwin. He's a lot taller than he actually looks out there on the court standing at 6'7". He's one of those Youngstown State commits, but he can really do it all out there. He's strong, a big build, and can also stroke it from downtown. Youngstown State, not far away from here, so certainly well worth the price of admission so far if you want to see him play. Barry Evans checking back into the game for our family. He's one of those stretch players, kind of a wing position, but he's got the height to be able to play some of these taller ISA offensive plays. And Irwin completes the three-point play there. 51.9 seconds left in the first period. And that's what ISA does. They stay in the game. They chip away at the lead. Obviously, that uh, our family is the better team here, but ISA is not going to go without a fight, and they have a strong coaching staff that's going to put them in the right position. Lindsay doubled. Almost stolen by ISA. English fights out of there. In the corner. Lindsay kicks it back out to English. Lindsay for three in the corner. That one rolls home, but on the follow-up, it's Barry Evans. And that's exactly what Evans does for you. He's not going to be the best shooter out there, but he's athletic and can get to the rim. Casisco answers right back. Nice charge to the lane there. Fell down. But it still goes in. 10 seconds left. It's English. Calling for a screen for Walden. English. Gets around it for three. That one is good. And Trey English showing us a new side to his game there. Dropping the three off the high pick and roll by Walden. Absolutely. Two threes. That gives him six. As that'll end the first period of play here. And it's our family. 25. International Sports Academy. 16. And one thing, you mentioned that these teams weren't really three-point shooting teams, at least compared to West Virginia Elite, who was shooting out of the gym. So how did that surprise you? Like, how did they attack yesterday? Was it an, in, was it an outside approach, inside, outside? So ISA was mixing it up yesterday, an uh, even mix of three-pointers and two-pointers. They were in the block a lot more, but they were playing against a smaller team yesterday. So that makes sense. But for our family, I believe they only shot two or three threes in the entire game yesterday. They've been more relying on being able to get to the rim, and they're still doing that, but they just have fantastic ball movement there in that first quarter. A lot of wide-open jump shooters, and then even Trey English hitting a contested one. So what can ISA do to counter that from our, our family? Hey, you know the old adage, hand down, man down. They, these are taller players. you got to get a hand up in their face and make it uncomfortable for them to shoot. Anyone can make it when you're shooting wide open, so just make a little bit more discomfort for those jump shooters. So we're about to get underway. Second period of play. Our family up nine. So it's Lucarati. Lucarati on the drive, stolen by English, but Lucarati picks it back up. Over in the corner, Irwin, last touch by our family, and it'll remain. ISA ball. There was a wide open jump shooter in the corner there, but someone got a hand on it. It's nice defensive work using the wingspan and getting a deflection. Luke Ferrari flies it out to Irwin. Now it's Lee and Luke, excuse me, Irwin for three. And that one goes. And great use of the screen off the ball there. Josh Irwin got the back screen, left him wide open, and a beautiful shot. So it's Evans, crossover to the hole, off the glass and in. And you just can't stop that if you're ISA. Good offense beats good defense, and uh, we saw that there. Evans has four. Lucarati over to Casisco. Irwin. Irwin, triple threat. Fights out of her spin move, fadeaway shot. That doesn't go. Rebound, KJ Evans. Over to Bryce Lindsay. Lindsay on the drive. Nice kiss off the glass for two. And our family deferring to some of their bench players. You can tell with the speed and athleticism, they, they got some fresh legs coming off the bench, and they're using them. 
excuse me, that was Daniel Parsons sets for two, his first point. Met at the rim there, and he'll go to the line. Luca Roddy definitely went in there to challenge him, uh, but he did draw the foul, so that's a good thing as he'll go to the line for two. So I guess you would qualify that as a good foul. I mean, it wasn't an and one. You didn't get dunked on, so you have to at least feel good about your defensive presence there. Yeah, it's the high school level. It's not going to be the best uh, free throw shooters in the world, so make him work for the points. And you're also sending a message that he'll remember that he's going to be down there next time, foul or not. Lucarati gets his first. And the second one goes off front rim and out. So our family will bring it up as Trey English. Around the hole, Lindsay. Over to Evans. Trey English. Trey English. He likes to go ISO, but he loses the ball to Lucarati on the steal. And Trey English unable to finish the play there, but some wobbly ankles by the defender. Irwin. He lost the ball. Long pass on to Evans. Evans with two hands slams it down. And that's just too easy for Evans. Standing at 6'10. That's just a hop, skip, and a jump to the rim. Double figures for Evans with 11. And they call a foul here. And after Evans had a quiet day yesterday, this is really the game we were expecting out of him. Definitely playing to his potential here in the early going to this one. So describe his game. Was it, was it just a putting the clamps on or was it just a bad shooter's day? It was just a bad shooting day. I mean, everyone has them, uh, especially as much traveling as these teams are doing, going from gym to gym. Uh, it takes a while to get into a rhythm, and that's understandable. But, I mean, his game is built for success. He has the height. He has the length. He has the speed. And let's not forget, he can shoot it with the best of them. So after the basket by Lucarati, it's Evans. Evans picks it in the corner. Evans, KJ Evans for three. That one doesn't work. And the rebound is to ISA. Leon in the corner for three. And that one goes for Lucarati. And Luca Roddy and uh, Josh Erwin, they have some nice looking shots. You can tell they've spent many hours in the gym working on the stroke. So Luca Roddy, like a microwave, has all six of his points in the second quarter. Evans on the answer, that goes nowhere. Luca Roddy, over in the corner. Erwin, pass on. And it's Leon with the two. When I said before the game that Leon can do it all, we're getting a good display of that there. We saw the three earlier in the game, this time putting his head down and getting to the rack. Right now he has seven. Four point game for our family. It's English. English, crossover moves. Trying to break down over Lucarati, couldn't get the foul or the shot. And Lucarati definitely got a little bit of arm there on the jump shot. Referees missed that one. Ball goes out of bounds and a four point game. Chance for ISA to get this down to a single possession. So mass substitutions for our family. So it's Lindsay. Bryce Lindsay in the corner. Oh, Brendan. Inside pass, Walden. Skyhook doesn't work. And that's something that Walden will learn there. The bigger man, he had position inside. Instead, he went to his inside shoulder when instead he should have went around to the outside and be able to use the glass. And Larry Casisco for three is it's now a one point game. So our family, their big lead now down to one. Walden over to Evans, and he'll go to the line. And once again, we saw Walden turn to his outside shoulder, sorry, inward towards his inside shoulder, 
That's just because he's a right-handed player and he's comfortable with that right hand. Once he can develop to fake that inside and go outside, that's going to be hard to defend. Absolutely. And it seemed that he had on that hook shot, he had a little bit more space. He could have walked in there and probably go for a jam there. Is it just like um, just wanting to be stylish or just being young over time? That's just something that you'll develop? Sometimes you just get a little bit lost on the court. I mean, he's a, he's a big man. He's used to bodies being all around him. It'd be like a quarterback being able to throw every time and expecting not to get hit. It's kind of just, you know there's going to be bodies down there, so sometimes you turn around, you're wide open, and it can confuse you a little bit. So that trip to the line, Evans completes it with two shots. And they call a foul there. Second foul on Lindsay. Referees having a little bit of a chat there, trying to give them instructions. It's trying starting to, to get a little chippy. They're just trying to keep things under control, and now we're going to get this ticky-tack foul called, and that's exactly what that is, just trying to get things under control. So what's, what, are, what are the type of fouls they typically call? Is it blocks? I mean, you can't necessarily call shooting. They weren't in a shooting motion. So it really just depends on the point of the game. Right now, we're starting to see both teams get a little bit chippy. They've been talking to each other. So uh, they're going to call that ticky-tack foul just to kind of get them settled down to let them know that it's not going to be able to go any further from here. Lucarati off the screen for three. That doesn't work, and it'll go out of bounds. And fortunate that one went out of bounds because our family had numbers going the other way off the long rebound. Yeah, they, they tend to leak out on defensive rebounds. And, of course, with their athleticism, it works well for them. They can get those highlight reel plays like that alley-oop. The commander for this offense coming back in. And uh, Trey English, it looks like they're going to get him the ball off the pass instead of having him dribble it up, which is a smart decision. Not this okay. time, as it's stolen by Lyon. Lyon with the jam and the foul. Oh my goodness. He got up and put it on the head of Walden. You're not gonna see that too often. And Walden kept his composure with a man yelling in his face. He has better patience <laughs> than I. Absolutely, and uh, I'm trying to remember the badge for an NBA 2K. I guess it's an inside finisher, contact dunks. Uh, certainly, he's got a silver at least, maybe a gold. And Liam knew he was coming behind him after the steal and went up with uh, some emphasis and jammed it on him. What an emphatic way to tie the game. 2.59 left in the half. Let's see how Walden will respond. He's already asking for it once again down there in the paint. You know he's going to want to make a one-on-one -on -one move. Absolutely. So it's K.J. Evans. Evans on the drive in the corner. Brendan for three. That one goes. And that's a great response by our family with the tie game. And they take back the lead off a great kick and shot. That's how you answer back after getting jammed on. Damari Martin. Damari Martin. A little bit of a... You're going to call it steps there, but it still goes. This ISA offense is starting to click. they got to figure it out that there's some open lanes going through the middle, and they're burning the on-ball defenders. Approaching the two-minute mark. So it's Evans. Evans closely guarded by Martin, and they call too many steps. Great defense by Damari Martin there to force that. Hey, basketball's a game of momentum, and right now ISA has it. That dunk definitely didn't hurt, um, but... Just look for them to keep up the defensive pressure and they'll be just fine in staying in this game. So now we're at the two minute mark. Lion over to Martin. Ratchik, Lucarati up top on the wing, Damari Martin. Lucarati with the screen, Lucarati kicks it over in the corner. Casisco, Casisco with two men on him. And that one goes. Great ball movement there by ISA and great movement away from the ball as well. People getting into open spots and then just hitting the open jumper. Lucarati's eight points. As he's just been one of the catalysts to that start. Trying to answer back. And that's an ill-advised shot right there. They have to get 
the ball in the hands of KJ Evans or Adam Walden at least once on every possession. There's just a lot of standing around there and a lack of remote offense. Lucarati, nice handles, and they'll call a block there. As right now, just everything not going the way of our family. Yeah, Adam Walton's having a tough time right now. After getting dunked on, you know that's going to be all over Instagram uh, once we get to clip it. But, uh, but yeah, couldn't get the foul call there. He was a little late sliding in, so he's going to get the block. Oh, you never want to be on the gram for anything like that. That's going to be tough. So Lucarati at the line, shooting two. And he doesn't get the first one. Lucarati's gotten off to a good start. Eight points to his tally, zero fouls. Eight points in the second quarter alone. Leading scorer today is KJ Evans. He's at 13. Had 10 in the first quarter. Lucarati completes the trip at the line. So it's Lindsay. English, English on the drive, off the glass. Not this time. And just rushed that one a little bit much. Could have took his time, had a wide open lane, but chose to go with the reverse and missed it. 45 seconds remaining. Rolling around. Nice little fight to the rim by Ratchik. Everything is going right for ISA right now. They're on a nice little run. Let's see if our family can stop the bleeding here before the half. English over to Lindsay. Lindsay. Guarded by Rochick. And they gotta give Walden the ball here. A smaller defender on him, and instead he deferred to the pass. But it works out for him, a three by KJ Evans. And Evans is certainly making up for the lack of shooting in yesterday's game, now 16 points, and he's on fire from behind the arc. And they call a traveling violation, so it's gonna be interesting to see what our family does with 3.5 seconds left. Martin back in. As Lucarati will sit for a little mini rest before halftime. So it's English bringing it up. Two seconds and one. He got it off. And it goes! Trey English at the buzzer. And he may have even got away with a foul on the side of ISA. There was some contact. Hey, but that's why you do it. You got to put up the heave. It always has a chance of going in. And he got that one to find the net. What a way to end the first half of play as it's our family, 42, and the International Sports Academy, 40. And we'll be right back on the Roxamore Sports Network.
Trouble can find anyone. At Frank Walker Law, we take the time to understand your situation and work tirelessly on your behalf. Hard-hitting representation when you need it the most. A real law firm getting real results. Time report here on the Rock Sports Sports Network as it's our family, 42 International Sports Academy, 40, and what a exciting end to the finish! A half court buzzer beater by Trey English. Yeah, it was a crazy shot and a high scoring affair in general. Both teams came out shooting extremely well, and I definitely look to continue that in the second half. But they're going to have to get some stops. ISA is if they want to get back into this one. And for a while, they were getting those stops as Michael Lucarati has eight points and Broden Leon has 10. And really, Lucarati's comeback in the second period, he didn't have any points in the first, really made ISA almost scary for this our family team to attack. Yeah, and for Lucarati, it's just about finding open space and getting open to take some jump shots. We don't see him go into the lane too much, but he definitely has the ability to drive and kick. But for him, it's just about getting that open shot and finishing it from there. Really, for a while, our family was having trouble because they were trying to go to ISO, and Trey English wanted to break down his opponent instead of keeping the ball moving, something similar to what KJ Evans had, who had 16. And whenever they finally snapped out of that isolation trance, that's when their offense started moving again. Yeah, that's just a tough draw for the ISA defense. There's athletes scattered around the offensive side for our family. So they were doing a good job of keeping Ev or sorry, keeping English in front, but Evans has been making the real difference. Like you said, 16 points, and he's doing it in every sort of way. At the rim, behind the arc, the kid's doing it all. So what does ISA need to do to come back and get a win here after coming back from a, a fairly large de deficit? They were up as big as 10 as I can remember before they chipped away at that lead and ultimately took it back for a short bit. Yeah, they just got to continue to keep hitting shots and getting bodies on people on the defensive side. Second chance points will kill them. And uh, so far our family's been getting a few of them, but it looks like it's time for us to head back to the table as we're getting ready for a second half. Absolutely, stay tuned on the Roxmore Sports Network.
second half action getting ready to begin on the Roxmoor Sports Network as it's our family up two over the International Sports Academy, 42 to 40. Yep, definitely ready for a second half play here. A tight, contested game. And the three-pointer at the buzzer really made the difference. It would have been down by one for our family. Instead, they're up by two. So let's see what these guys have to offer. So it's Lindsey off to Walden. He had four. Lindsey for three. No one around him. Rolls out. Rebound. And it'll go to the line. Barry Evans. And he didn't hit the three, but I love that game plan for our family, getting Walden a touch early, let him turn around, see the rim, see the entire offense. And he created a nice look, unfortunately just couldn't hit the three. That foul's on Ratchet. So that's gonna be interesting to see if our family goes back to what you said, more of an inside attack com comparison to their first game, as opposed to this outside onslaught they've had in the first half. I'd say they're going to continue to keep their offense diverse. They can do it in a lot of ways. It's just about finding the right looks and being patient in your offensive sets. So Evans gets the basket. That's five points for him. Irwin. Irwin posting up. Irwin over Evans, and that one doesn't go for him. And we've seen Irwin try that one-footed fadeaway a couple times now. It was working yesterday, but with these taller and lankier defenders, that's a tough shot. Walden's pass to Evans, picked off. And ISA on the break, Irwin for three. Bounces off the side of the rim, but skying is Lucarati. And he'll call a reach and foul there. Great work by Lucarati, cleaning up the miss on the offensive side, getting his team a second chance. Second foul on English. Lucarati inside pass. That's another inbounds play that works out for them. And once again, just catching the defender sleeping with their back to the ball. That'll get you every time if you're not awake out there on the court. Lucarati has 11, his first points of the second half. Barry Evans lost the handle, got it back. And it's English. English over his defender. That one doesn't work, but the rebound goes to Walden. Bryce Lindsay. Lindsay on the drive, up and under, not this time. And the ball will still remain with our family as it was last touched by ISA. And our family's getting some good looks. I'm liking their ball movement. Just haven't been able to finish here to start the second half. English over in the corner for three. That one's good, Bryce Lindsay. Bryce Lindsay has one of the better looking shots on this team. It's pure coming off his fingers and he's hit a couple today. Now five points for him. Lion, stopped up by our family. Over to Lucarati, Lucarati on the baseline. Ball off the foot of Evans, it'll remain with ISA. That's just good hands there by Evans, making uh, ISA work for it on the offensive side. So Lucarati on the inbound. Over to Irwin. Irwin on the wing. Starts his dribble. Hands it off. Irwin on the post up. Irwin trying to get to the hole. Great defense by Evans as he'll get the ball back and he's going the other way. Throws it up. And nice awareness there to draw the foul and he'll go to the line. And Irwin getting a little bit greedy down there on the paint in the opposite side. That it was not a favorable matchup with the larger KJ Evans on him. Forced one up and uh, created a fast break the other way. And chance of points now from the line. And Evans' first shot goes. He'll make you pay. No matter where he is on the court. Whether it be the foul line defensively or, of course, in the skies or behind the three-point line. And it's just important right now for ISA to keep this game within reach. That We know that they can string together points. They just have to keep it within that five to seven range and they'll be okay as we get down to the later parts of this game. Evans didn't get the second one, but our family keeps it. Evans for three in the corner. Not this time. Good look there for Evans, just a little bit short. Almost had the chance for the putback dunk his teammate did, but uh, just off the mark. And they call an elbowing there. Lucarati got open. Uh, 
unfortunate there for Leon as the elbow will have the ball go the other way for our family up five. 229 played in this third period. And Leon just trying to show some aggressiveness there, setting a screen on the much larger defender. And sometimes when you try to body someone, you get the foul called. That's just a part of basketball. So now, so now the foul on Walden as it'll go right back to ISA, who's down five. And this is a matchup I like here. Leon's a lot faster than Walden, but he's really not looking to score right now. A little bit of complacency here on this ISA offense. He seems like he's trying to facilitate a little bit more. As they call a foul there. And of course, Leon would rather take that shot off the pass rather than the dribble. So maybe just trying to get it in the hands of a ball handler and then look for the kick out. Second foul on Lindsay as another inbounds play there. And that goes to Broden Lyon. And you can't be happy about that if you're the coach for our family. The third time getting Bird on an inbounds play. Evans on the baseline. Evans lost his footing, but it bounced all the way out to Lindsay. Bryce Lindsay. Now he has Lyon on him. He likes his matchup. He'll drive to the hole. Kicks it over for three. Not for Barry Evans. Back the other way goes ISA. Martin for three. Bounces out. Lucarati on the rebound. Hangs in the air and gets that one to go. Great take there by Lucarati. He wanted the foul. It looks like there was definitely some contact, but he'll definitely take the two and just a one point lead now for our family. And our family doesn't like that. No call timeout. 4 16 remaining in the third period. Yeah, just like I said, I say they just need to keep it close. They've been able to string together points. They haven't been getting the best looks. They rushed that three on two. I really didn't like that shot, but they were fortunate to get the offensive rebound, and Luca Roddy did the rest from there. So right now, two players for ISA in double figures, and currently only one for our family, and that's Evans, who has been the lightning rod on offense after a slow game the other day. Yeah, and he started out hot in the first half. He's kind of simmered down a little bit, but he's still getting great looks and really being able to get to the rim whenever he wants. Full TO here. So another guy to look at for, for ISA that's kind of been making a little bit of an impact is Irwin. Irwin has, has been able to really move the ball around and get it to these hot shooters for ISA. And it's nice to see that, especially with some of the trouble ISA had on offense as our family was active in the passing lanes and whenever a team that's athletic as them is active in the passing lanes that usually means fast breaks the other way. Yeah and Irwin made a couple shots early in the game so that's going to draw some defenders to him open up some space for his teammates and that's just the way it works someone gets hot you got to correct it and then that makes other people open. So on the reset 416 left. Another Tomahawk jam, and that's Barry Evans. And Evans saw the rim there, and he knew what he, his objective was, rose up high with one hand and went for blood. Went baseline there, and a hell of a ball. But a timeout by ISA. They had the possession arrow, but better safe than sorry in that situation, especially after a Tomahawk word to Vince Carter by a by Evans. Yeah, that's just supreme athleticism by Evans. The defender was smart to get out of his way because he was on a mission toward the rim. It's always fun to see that, but I imagine uh, fortunately I'm not anything in terms of defense there, so I don't have to worry about that, but I imagine if you're around the same height, seeing that on the way to the hoop is not a pleasant sight. Certainly is not. Um, I played a lot of basketball in my day. I'm happy to say I've never been dunked on, and that's simply because I know when it's coming, just get out of the way, don't jump. I know, I knew at least in pickup to stay on the perimeter. So on the reset, 3.59 left in the third period. Inside pass, Irwin. And it's off. And Irwin and Luca Rotti are just magicians down there in the paint. They're great finishers and even better passers. It was off an inbounds play, so another inbounds set that 
our family really couldn't defend on there. What's what's the fix to that? Because that seems just like a lack of awareness more than anything else. Yeah, it's just the better team being a little bit lazy on the inbounds. They're just expecting them to toss it in and get into their offensive set. But ISA is looking to score. Trey English with the ball. He's got nine. Stolen by ISA. And here's Rochick inside pass to Irwin. Nice play there as he'll get the assist. And there's that run we were expecting by ISA. It's coming a little bit earlier than expected, but our family's having some trouble right now getting their offense to click. Three minutes played. Three minutes left, excuse me. On the drive, Barry Evans over Martin, kicks it to the corner. Lindsey for three, bounces out. We could hear it down here on the floor. Irwin calling out exactly what our family's doing on that offensive set. He called out the flare, and that's exactly what the offensive player did. So great awareness by Irwin, and obviously a smart and well-coached basketball team. Martin's three didn't go. And they'll call a foul on Cisco. That's his second. So no real foul trouble for either of these teams. Number 31, Adam Walden. He has three, but they got big men galore on this our family team, so he can afford to be a little bit aggressive. He'll currently sit. on the bench now is Walden. So it's Evans. Over to Evans. KJ Evans. Across the way. English. Steps back. Crossover move. All the way to the hole. He couldn't finish there. Barry Evans on the rebound. Kicks it out to KJ Evans. And it's stolen by Lyon. Lyon on the fast break. And a hard foul there. And Leon's already dunked on one of these Our Family players. Evans wasn't going to let that happen again. A hard foul. And these guys, they're acting like they don't like each other. A little bit of bad blood. But that's just great competition. Good hard foul by Evans. A clean foul doing it the right way. And they definitely met up at the rim. Lyon was checking for a little bit of Heinz ketchup on his lip, lip from that elbow a little bit. But he's fine. He'll stay in the game. The big thing now is being able to convert at the free throw line. It's going to be a close game. It's going to be coming down to foul shots. And there we saw it again, just struggling from the charity stripe, both of these teams. And Lyon gets the second one. So now a two-point lead. And I like this here. High ball screen for English. Let's see if we can get... Evans a kick in the corner. He wants it. Around the horn. English for three. Not this time. Rebound by Irwin. And English had one more pass to give there. Evans was standing over here on the uh, foul line. Extended wide open. Definitely would have been an open shot for him. Damari Martin covered by English. Back to Lucarati. Two highest scorers were covering each other there. And look at Irwin working hard in the paint. Doing a good job. With three of our family on him, he couldn't get that one to go. That's a tough shot down there in the trees. The smaller Irwin, he's a big dude at 6'7", but he was surrounded by 6'9 and 6'10". And English on the drive there. And our family's really doing what they've been able to do throughout the entire game right now. They're just struggling to hit shots. And they, they've been on a little bit of a slump here in the end part of the third period. But they're getting good looks. They'll continue to put points up. They just got to hang in this one. 79 seconds remaining in the third period. And a back and forth affair here at North Allegheny High School. Sky and cast, stolen by Lucarati. Lucarati backing it down all the way for Leon. And turnovers have really been hurting our family here. Coming off the inbounds, just a sloppy pass intercepted and then converting on the other side did ISA. It's clear that our family is talented as we reach the one minute mark. It's just that sometimes uh, the mental errors have been the undoing for this team as Lindsay, floater alert doesn't work. And ISA is playing a great basketball game here in the second half. In the corner, Cisco as the ISA bench roars to life from that one. Huge shot there for ISA. In the last seconds here of the third period, they now have a seven point lead. So our family looking for a little bit of last second miracle magic like at the end of the half. 
Lindsay for three. Couldn't answer back. Rebound Rochick. And they're settling right now. Leaving a lot of time on that clock and didn't get the best look. Excuse me, that was Leon. Leon gets it back. A little bit of the baby hook. Excuse me, they called a foul. Got a little bit of a head myself there. Thought he managed to make a nice play and get the baby hook to go, but not this time. Checking in for the first time now, Connor Andrews, the senior guard. An active member on that bench. We've seen him cheering on his teammates. Now he gets a chance to show what he can do. 15.2 seconds remaining. Our family down seven. It's English with the ball. There's a English. huge chance here for ISA to get a stop going into the fourth quarter and keeping that seven point lead, and they will. Cisco lost the handle. But our family couldn't get a shot off as that'll end the third period of play. And it's ISA up seven. The score is International Sports Academy 56 and our family 49. And we'll be right back on the Roxworth Sports Network. Here we go, the final period of action. It's a seven point game here on the Roxmoor Sports Network as it's the International Sports Academy out of Ohio, 56, and our family, 49. So a little bit of a half court press here, and Lucarati gets out of there. Lucarati, bit forceful there. He gets the foul. And ISA is getting frustrated here. There's definitely some uh, contact there on the defensive pressure, but didn't get the call. They just got to keep playing strong. So on the inbound, Martin almost lost it to KJ Evans. Martin, crossover move. Gets it over to Lucarati. Lucarati behind the back, but he lost the ball. And here's KJ Evans on the break. Bryce Lindsey off the glass and in. And a great pass there by Evans. He definitely could have took it himself, but with the two on one, finding the open teammate, just a great look. So on the steal there, the ISA player certainly didn't like that. Nice play by Trey English, and he'll go to the line. Yeah, some obvious frustration there by Luca Roddy. He just telegraphed that pass right to the defender for our family, and now it leads to a chance for points and uh, maybe a chance for our family to shave down this lead in the fourth. Rare mental mistake by ISA. They'd be almost perfect, and the one and one doesn't work for English. So for ISA, it's Ratchic over the timeline. Lucarati. English got a hand on it over in the corner. And too many dribbles, double dribble there. And that's just a result of the defensive pressure by our family. Anytime you see a, where a person dribbles, picks it up and dribbles again, they're just stressed out from tough defense. So our family, at least defensively, on a good start there. Lindsay. From Evans to English. English, step back for three. Gets that one to go. And that's the shot that our family's been looking for. It just took English a little bit of time to find it after the first half. He's now got 12. And they call a travel there. Wow, so high.
high pressure defense by our family has certainly been paying dividends as it's now a two point game. And boy, this is working its way into a great game. 56-54, the two point lead, and we've been going back and forth all day. All right, so it's Trey English. Over to Lindsay. Bryce Lindsay. Bounce pass back to English up top. Lindsay to screen. 2-3 zone for ISA. English couldn't roll it home. That one in and out, just flushed out of the rim. A good looking shot by English, couldn't finish. But the double there by Woodyard. And, and one for KJ Evans. Nice half court trap creating offense there for our family as suddenly the momentum has shifted on defense. Yeah, ISA is a little bit out of control right now and that's a part of the full court pressure. When you see a team like our family turn up the heat, you're gonna see a response by ISA and they're either gonna get wide open looks or turnovers and we're seeing the turnovers right now. I mean, how has this game just swung? Because it seemed that the mental errors were going more for our family than ISA. This is almost kind of shocking a little bit. Yeah, that's just the game of basketball. I mean, they're making adjustments on the fly and these are two extremely well-coached teams, two athletic teams. So you're gonna have your dips and your ups and downs, but it's just about keeping your head in the game because you know a run's coming soon for your team. And a little bit of uh, discussion over here. There seems to be a disagreement at the scorer's table. Coach of ISA, Dave. Yeah, Dave I'm not Ricky. sure. Not sure what the discrepancy is here, but it looks like ISA is going to bring in uh, number zero, Damari Martin. So Evans looking to complete the three-point play. And he gets that one to go. 7-0 run for our family. Now an 8-0 run, excuse me. So it's Lyon. Bad pass there, and English will go all the way for the layup. And that's just about being in the passing lane there by English, knowing where he was on the court, put him right in the good spot to jump the pass, just like a cornerback. It's just like that in basketball. As suddenly, the mental errors, Luke Karate trying to answer back, almost got it. And problems and compounding now for ISA, a mixture of turnovers and not being able to hit shots. That was a nice look. And it's Barry Evans back the other ways. Luke Karate was not happy with himself there. And they got to call a timeout, ISA. And that's exactly what our family does. They're going to put their foot on the pedal. Still a chance for ISA, plenty of time left in this game, but our family has turned it up a notch. What do you say to ISA's players right now after this? It's just that it seemed that everything was going well, and then just out of nowhere, just a right hook to the face, and suddenly they're reeling. Yeah, you just got to take a breath. I mean, we saw our family turn on the full court pressure, and that is going to bother a team that's not as athletic. So just take a deep breath. Be very careful about your passes. Don't telegraph them, and then you got to hit some shots. It's obvious. We're seeing our family hit some shots and get some momentum going, and that's what it's been about all game. There's been teams that have been hitting shots, and then they go cold, and then the other team hits shots. So just keeping your composure, get good looks, and just trust the shot. So how, how can they break this full court pressure? They can't throw it away or just throw it up to no one because our family is too athletic for that and they're trying to dribble it. So that's that's the first mistake in trying to beat the press. You beat the press with passes, getting it up the court, taking your time, and uh, just not telegraphing the passes. And they'll, they'll be fine. They're gonna learn from their mistakes and they'll be able to come and attack the zone better here in the last part of the fourth. 12-0 run. Our family on a 12-0 run to begin this fourth quarter. So ISA is trying to figure some things out right now as it's Luke Karate. Irwin up top, guarded by English. Leon lost the ball there. And I'd like to see him get a touch for Leon earlier in that set. Maybe a high ball screen for him. He just really hasn't been engaged here in the second half. So 
on the so on the inbound there for ISA. Substitutions on the court. Lee and calling for it. Lucarati with the ball. For three. Ratchet answers back. That's the look they needed, and they finally hit it. Nice looking play there to get three points and get them back into this game. So that will snap the 12 0 run for our family. On the answer, Evan, but no call foul. And you got to foul him there. KJ Evans, just a nice step off the first dribble. He had the corner and was going for the rim. You got to get a hard foul on him and make him earn it at the charity stripe. So they're in the bonus. That foul on Casisco is third. And he gets the first one. So on the one and one, he'll go back to the line. He's now got 21 points. And Evans completes his trip at the line. Leading scorer in the game. And right back to some full court pressure. It looks like it's just a man-to-man -man defensive set. And they break the timeline there. Lion. Almost a little bit out of control there, but it managed to get a foul. Yeah, and they're sending that double team to Broden Lee and very quickly did a good job of squaring up to the hoop, finding the open person with two defenders on him. Threw the foul, wasn't able to get the shot up, so they'll have a baseline inbounds, but we've seen him convert three of them and a chance here at another. There they go, Lyon, and he'll go to the line there, so another baseline conversion, and that's really been the story for the offense of ISA. Yeah, that's their fourth time getting a score off the baseline inbound, and it's just poor positioning on the side of our family. They got to hedge that pass better because he has his back completely turned to the ball. Evans has to look out, third foul. As they complete the trip at the line there, the Lion. And just like that, here comes ISA getting it down to a one point game. Absolutely. So up top, it's Parsons. English. Trey English, crossover, he'll drive, off the glass and in. And just what the doctor ordered for our family, Trey English is the engineer of this team, getting things done and getting a look for himself. He's got 16, Luke Karate lost the handle. And here comes Parsons. Saved by ISA in favor of our family. And it's English. Great hustle by both teams there. Both of them are playing to win right now and an intense game as we finish out. On the follow up, it's Barry Evans as a little bit of an up and under by English didn't work. A great take there by English. That ball hanging on the rim, a great try, but an awesome follow there by Evans cleaning it up and getting two big points for his team. Lucarati over to Martin. Damari Martin in the corner. Cisco driving off the baseline, that doesn't go. And a nice fight for the rebound by Parsons as Cisco fell down in the process. So now it's English over the timeline. Lindsay. And they call a timeout, our family. And on the other side there for ISA, that was a great drive, but Cisco just a little bit out of control going too fast toward the hoop. So, so we've seen, again, this back and forth. It seems like a little bit whenever a team is, seems to almost pull away, here comes the other. And in this case, it was ISA, though. Here comes our family again, up five now. Yeah, it's continuing to be a game of runs. And ISA is doing a good job of hanging in there. And then they score in spurts. That's what they've been showing us the entire game. So if they're within, like I said, five to seven points, they're going to be comfortable to make a comeback. But we are running out of time here. They got to get, uh, get going here soon. Absolutely. And what have you seen in ISA that has made them successful? So they're playing fundamental basketball. We talked about it at the beginning of the game. They're the less athletic team. They're the less skilled team. But they have players that are going to play hard and know how to play the game of basketball the right way. So they've been doing that. They're getting good looks. They're playing fundamentally on the defensive side, even though they're undermanned. And they just got to keep that up, and they'll be able to hang in this game. All right, so we have three minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the fourth period of play. Our family up five, the score is 67-62. So, 
So Barry Evans on the inbound. It's English. He has 16. Bryce Lindsey. English gets it back. Slower pace here. English activates with Rachik on him. Yeah, and our family know they has the lead. They're not going to rush anything here. No shot clock, so they could technically drain it all the way down, but they're going to just look for a good shot instead of rushing something. English on that isolation kicks it over to Barry Evans. And very close to a five-second count there. English got it away just in time. Barry Evans on the handoff. Lindsay, and he's fouled by ISA. And the fans here for ISA aren't going to like them holding the ball, but at Smart Basketball, you have the lead. Make them either come out and pressure you to get a turnover or draw a foul, and now they'll be going to the line for two. First foul on Irwin. Yeah, so talk about that five-second closely guarded. What, what constitutes that? Because really, there's been a lot of five-second instances where you could say, like, that could be called. Yeah, so it's just about the defender being within an arm's reach of the offensive player while he's dribbling. And uh, basically, once you're, they'll, you'll see the referee start the count, and you get five seconds. And if you go past that, it's a turnover going the other way. Lindsey gets both. Almost had the steal there. Instead, it goes to Irwin for three. Three of ISA all over Evans, but he gets the rebound. On the leak out is Lindsey. And that's great hands on the way back by Josh Irwin. They had a two-on-one. Definitely could have went for the alley-oop lob, but instead had it tipped away. Great defense. And seen the hit off the knee of Lindsey as that's ISA ball. And they call a travel there. So again, the press, it seems that at least on the full court press on the inbounds, which they have to go the full, full distance, our family is doing it. Yeah, so you don't see that very often. Basically, as the inbounder, you're only allowed to move across the baseline on a made basket. That one was coming off the out of bounds, and we saw him shuffle trying to get a player open, and that's going to be a violation. And a punch, and it will remain with our family off that inbound. And down seven, ISA is in desperate need of a stop here with two minutes left. 203 exactly. And a held ball there as Walton manages to hang on to it and possession still remains with our family. Yeah, stop and go here late in the fourth. Both teams competing, getting on the floor, love to see it. Two minutes remaining, our family up seven. Both teams are in the bonus. We'll see whether they want to go to Walden or KJ Evans here for this play as they go way back into the backcourt for the inbounds. And it's allowed on inbounds play, so, so English will bring it back up. Guarded by Rochich. English into a double over to Lindsey. Back to English. Sweeping defense. English just threw it up. That'll count as a pass. English, cross court, inside Walden. Great passing here by our family. Smart passes on the line, keeping them over the outstretched arms of ISA. They've wasted 30 seconds of clock with this. Four corners offense. Barry Evans. Seems like they're content with not getting a shot off, and Lucarati had the foul there. That's just excellent time wasting by our family. Yeah, that's very well executed, and you can tell that's a team that's been ahead a few times before. Good execution, and now going to the foul. Absolutely, and though there's a lot of physicality here, it's still good sportsmanship. It's been a lot of, we've seen some moments, but it's more frustration of how, just how the game can go sometimes. Yeah, this is competitive nature. People are going to get chippy, but we've seen some great sportsmanship by both teams really uh, buying into the message here for this MLK tournament. And English completes his trip at the line. Back the other way is ISA. Rochich over to Lyon. Lyon for three. And that one well off. And it'll go the other way for our family. 
And Lyon just hasn't been able to find the touch here in the second half. We saw him dunk on someone in the first, but that's really the biggest play he's had. He's been struggling from the field. So our family looking to complete the game currently on an 8-0 run. Lindsay cross court over to KJ Evans. Back to English. Masterful play. Masterful passing. And now they're going to go back to the foul, but probably too little too late as we're just under a minute here in a nine-point lead for our family and a chance to extend it to double digits for the first time today. How favorable is it to be up with no shot clock in high school basketball? Because that's obviously something you don't see in the pros. They have, they're on a timer, 24 seconds. In college, it's 30. And it's that's something you just can't do in other levels. Yeah, so at, at the high school level, it's... It's part of the game. You have to know that you're not going to have the shot clock. So if you get down to crunch time and you have a considerable lead, the other team's probably just going to hold it. Luke Roddy with two of our family on him. Almost got that one to go. Rebound by K.J. Evans. And he's touched up and he'll go to the line on the intentional by Gomes. And I say still fighting hard. This is a good team. They know they got a lot of basketball left to play this year. Be interesting to see what ISA does along the way there. They're nationally competing, competing, so we won't see them again. But you have, you could tell this that this is a good team, just with the way they were able to fight back at times. It, our family managed to complete this run and win the game, but there was a lot of times where our family got on runs, but ISA was able to answer. And just a reminder for all of you tuning in at home, our Originally scheduled first game will now be played in the second one is going to be first love Christian taking on the Carolina Basketball Academy Lucarati's three-pointer doesn't go An intentional foul by ISA that one's on Ratchet his second and at this point the the game is over They're still playing hard. I, I like that. I get that but it's probably time to start fouling as this one's out of reach Evans, the leading scorer of the game, currently with 25 points, and there's 26. And 26 was the best total we saw yesterday out of all of the performances, so earning him uh, one of the top spots here in this showcase. Lucarati, turnaround shot, that doesn't work, as, he do, as it's the basket closed up for him in this game. He had a hot second quarter and he managed to extend that into the third but in the fourth our family figured him out and it was just curtains for the rest of the game. Yeah and when our family turned on the full court pressure that's really what was the uh, changing factor in this game and that's what teams do. I mean they knew it was going to be close and then they turned it on late in the third early into the fourth and it's just hard to beat that full court pressure. Martin for three that that, that one doesn't go. 20 seconds remaining. So it's Evans. ISA wishing not to foul, so time will bleed out. And Evans, he's certainly player of the game with 26. And that will be it. The final score is our family 77 and the International Sports Academy 62. And basketball, like always, a game of runs. And ISA really punctuated that one. Looking at my totals here, a 14-0 run to end the game. Yeah, our family really figured it out there at the end of the game, and ISA did go ice cold, unable to hit a shot. And that's just the way it goes sometimes. The, the better team usually figures out a way to win, and we saw that today with our family. So be sure to stick with us here as Carolina Basketball Academy will take on First Love Christian Academy out of Washington. They were our first game. Well, we moved it back. Absolutely.
Yep. And I'm with our family head coach, Julian Hall. Julian, our family ended this game on a 14-0 run. They got out to a little bit of runs, but how was this one different? Uh, we just we just want to make sure we told the guys to uh, stay, stick with the game plan. Stay disciplined, you know, uh, defend aggressively, but stay disciplined and, and everything going to work out. And one of the leading players for you was K.J. Evans. He had 26, and really he was a constant throughout the game. Just talk about his impact on the team. Uh, he's, a, he's a big leader on this team. The guys look up to him. You know what I mean? Uh, he, he, he played a good game today. Very aggressive. Yeah. And that's Julian Hall, head coach of our family. Julian, thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good day. And that's all. And that's so that's our that's our first game of, of the night. Again, the final score, our family 77. ISA 62. The leading scorers was KJ Evans with 26 for our, our family. Trey English with 17. Bryce Lindsay with 11. Barry Evans with 11. And Adam Walden with four. And now we'll flip it over to Travis Newton with more. All right, Tyler wrapped it up for us. Next up, we got the Carolina Basketball Academy taking on First Love. Two elite teams, a lot of athleticism, a lot of big bodies. So get ready for another great competition following the Our Family versus ICA. We'll bring it right to you here live on the Rocks and More Sports Network coming up next. <laughs> 